Like no other, Tumbad is a 2018 film which took almost a decade to be made solely because of how the filmmakers wanted it to look. With the schedule decided on the basis of the availability of natural light, rather the lack of it, Tumbad took 6 years just to be photographed. A film with an enormous canvas where each frame is like a painting. Cinematographer Pankaj Kumar boasts of channeling empathy, greed, guilt and gloom into visual imagery. This film is an unforgettable experience and I'm here to give my two cents on it. I present to you The Beauty of Tumbad. Vinayak the protagonist discovers a means of extracting gold from the womb of an ancient goddess. The womb is protected by the goddess's son Hastar and Vinayak finds a way to tame Hastar that he later passes on to his son Pandura. The visuals of Tumbad are a lesson on using colors to create an ambience that transports the audience to a certain era. So because of this overwhelming surrounding of darkness that these horror stories you know they they just become so real in your mind so that was the atmosphere that i wanted to capture for this film yeah that the atmosphere is dark it's sinister the creature which resides in your house is not entirely imaginary but the 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 dark atmosphere in the house itself gives such an eerie atmosphere that every moment is filled with dread if ever we encounter this monster of philippi the film has a limited color palette because the atmosphere is very specific and organic and so the cinematographer did not deviate from it this style is unique for indian cinema and culture however similar colors on the palette were not used to prevent it from becoming monotonous that's why heavily contrasting colors like blue and cold gray splashed with striking red and gold were used blue showcases the constant monsoon and the drenched world of the characters red has been strikingly used in the scenes inside the womb making the whole act of getting money appear spooky and dangerous yellow has been used to make it look period friendly as it mimics the light that came from lamps used back in the day and also put forth the idea of the characters being infatuated with money and greed the approach of tumbar is very different the subject itself demands a sort of environment that lends itself uh, very beautifully to these complementary colors of blue and red uh, so these two colors are very pronounced while muting other colors so it remains faithful to the atmosphere that a particular film wants to convey this color scheme can be seen in the costumes and the set design as well and you see it in the light source too in a sense the lanterns tumbar village looks timeless without a clear demarcation between day and night Since the film was shot only during monsoons, daylight is barely visible with natural light mostly diffused throughout the film. As spoken by the man himself, every part of uh, filming Tumbar was exciting. Every shot were full of these exciting possibilities. The lighting of Tumbar, I have used the simplest of equipments I have ever used on it. Once we decided that uh, you know my lighting approach largely is to to remain true to the source and that's how I create separation in foreground background. And so being truthful to the source of light gave rise to this idea of filming only with lantern lights because film is set in a period where there was no electricity so in the dark people used to have only these fire sources as uh, light sources so mostly they were surrounded by dark lanterns and lamp lights were the only source of light throughout the film in order to remain true to the era the film is set in that is the reason for it being a recurring prop in tumba some scenes were in fact lit with just a single lamp It gives the frame a low-key look and the high contrast created because of it keeps us on tenter hooks. The beauty in using lamp lights is the way it moves across people's faces and creates strong shadows. It gives an eerie feeling especially inside the womb. There are several shots where the light has been carried by the actors themselves. Here, Vinayak drops the lantern at the end of the alley, which I believe has been done on purpose. This lantern creates depth and separation in the frame. He then picks up another lantern in a rush to look for food for his daddy. Earlier in the scene, cinematographer Pankaj Kumar used some liberty and deliberately made young Vinayak carry the fire stick, which again any woman in such a situation would have dropped. This technique has been repeated throughout the film. However, when Vinayak is alone in the house and is responsible to feed his horrifying daddy some food, we are cut off from the quote unquote comfort of the lanterns as its fire suddenly extinguishes. changing the source of light from the lantern to just moonlight 
symbolizing Vinayak's discomfort too. Even when we don't see lanterns or fire in the frame, one can notice constant flickering of light that justifies it. The colors and lighting in the film set an atmosphere that sends chills down our spine. However, it wouldn't have been possible without the intelligent use of the camera. With a film as dark and graphical as this, it was essential for the audience to feel connected to the film and be put right into the unknown world of Tumbar and its folklore. One of the tools that is used to make the audience walk in the shoes of the characters is the dynamic camera movement. In the beginning and end of each chapter, we see a static shot of the location with extremely heavy downpour to exaggerate the wrath of the gods that Vinayak is heard talking about in the beginning of the film. और उसका नाम हमेशा के लिए भुला दिया जाएगा कई युग बीत गए हस्तर अपनी मां की कोख में सोता रहा पर एक दिन हमारे ही पूर्वजों ने उसे याद किया और उसके नाम का मंदिर बना दिया कहते हैं उस दिन से देवताओं का क्रोध बाढ़ पर बारिश बनकर बरस रहा है एट द एंड ऑफ द सेकंड चैप्टर देयर इज हैवी रेन ओवर विनायक सोम इन पुणे व्हिच हिंट्स टुवर्ड्स द एंगर ऑफ द गॉड्स फॉलोइंग द ग्रेट On the contrary, the final chapter's end has no downpour because Vinayak's son Pandurang has consciously chosen not to be greedy and sin like his father. The story of Hastar ends with him. As the film progresses, we notice that the crucial moments in the story are shorthanded to harmonize the audience with the scene. There are a lot of tracks and tilts and pans whenever a particular character in the film is checking out a space, imitating natural human behavior when one visits a new place. These movements are exaggerated whenever someone comes out of the womb to emphasize the disorientation that the character feels there. The technical decisions taken by the visual team is a spectacle in itself. They are in just style over substance, but they indirectly act as motifs. Speaking of motifs, the film has a couple of motifs that maintain the intrigue and spookiness throughout. The motif of the flood is evidently there in the story with Hasta being cursed to die as soon as he touches her. But visually it was a nice element to play with as it gave the frame a lot of depth and texture. Throughout the film shallow depth of field is avoided to make the spaces look defined and pleasing. Another important motif in the film is the eyes. Chitpavan Brahmins are known for the light eye color. When you get really close to somebody who's staring at you, you can see something beyond their eyes. The eyes take us right into their soul. The extreme close-ups of the eyes at several instances in the film are a deliberate attempt to do so. Tumbar is not about monstrous demons. It is about the horrors borne by a mere touch of sin, greed. Tumbar successfully portrays one of the most significant factors of a horror film: its aesthetics. With its world building, Tumbar doesn't resort to the cliches of the horror genre with its camera angles and movements. Rather, one can sense the characters' motivations, fears, and sorrows through the fine imagery coupled with its ingenious soundscape. It innovates with its choices of shots to elevate the source material and becomes a richly textured atmospheric experience. The feeling of being in a particular moment is captured by the sheer brilliance of such technical elements which are further edited with an impeccable depth and by giving the individual character arcs their due. What makes Tumbar stand out from its Indian contemporaries is not just this praiseworthy artistry but how the artistry brings out the themes in the writing. 